yesterday, I started cutting in the actual, um, well, this is like the down shaft. This, this takes everybody down to the tunnels, basically. So that's gonna go here and you'll be able to see it from the front. And then now I'm figuring out, you know, what, what I'm gonna cut into here and all that kind of stuff. And um, I, I made up a bunch more uh, wood yesterday. This has to soak in the vinegar and steel wool solution. Now I'm, I'm kind of ready. Uh, I'm gonna dive in and get some of the stuff built up today and, and cut like the, the horizontal shafts and, and like the rooms, there's gonna be a big room here. So yeah, I am, uh, I'm all psyched for today. That's where it is today. You know, I, I painted it black and and that helped me kind of, you know, I wanted to see where things were gonna stack up. Whenever it's done, I'll have lighting and all that kind of stuff. And how it looks just generally is kind of an important thing. So that's what the black was about. So once I did that, then I, I did this. So this is like a main room that you come into down underground and almost like a distribution area. There's gonna be track here where I'm pulling back sandbags. Here, I wanted to show the actual kind of how they did the mining, how they did the digging. And it's it's actually very specific. I, I figured it was a guy on his knees or something like that. No, not at all. There's like this backboard or uh, this, this specific setup. Here's the drawing. I don't know why heck I'm just talking about it and not just showing it to you. But anyway, it's just like this backboard arrangement. Really neat. Um, and so I'm going to do that here. And that was really important to, to kind of show what these gentlemen did. Then over here, you know, I kind of opened up this corner because I've got to have a windlass in there that a couple of guys are, you know, using to raise and lower, um, you know, lower equipment, raise equipment, um, in an emergency, possibly raise a person. Uh, but certainly there's a lot of sandbags that come out of here. All of the stuff that they're digging out has to, you know, go up that shaft. So there's going to be a windlass over here uh, and then like a, a block and tackle and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then this is really going to kind of set the, you know, what the what the theme is of it. Um, and you can see I've got my little guy in there to have like a little bit of scale. This is going to be his underground lab or testing facility. It's going to be all built up and it's so tall because I'm going to have some tanks in here. Like, I guess like the wooden wrapped, you know, tanks that they had kind of Victorian looking. This is in the, you know, early 1900s, of course. Um, maybe a, 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 an ironclad tank in there, but it has to be moved in through here. So it's going to be like in pieces. So anyway... A lot of fun ideas, but also like a catwalk up here 
that goes around the back side, all wooden, of course. Um, I don't want to have a lot of iron in here because it's supposed to, they also have to be quiet. Uh, but I want to have like a, a desk with papers and, you know, drawings on the wall, you know, all that kind of fun stuff that I really enjoy doing. Um, on the catwalk, I also might have uh, some library books just, just because, you know, maybe a chair in the corner because they are British, of course. Um, so then over here, or this lower room is going to be where they're testing the firing mechanism, the fuel, all that kind of stuff. loved all the the James Bond movies and uh Q where he got all of his all of his gadgetry there was always like this room for testing stuff so um I don't think they could have a big cement block poured down there maybe the Germans did but um I think the British may have had if they had need for that it would be like brick and so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring some brick in here put kind of like a, a blast backstop here and then have like testing equipment and and maybe like a recreation of the nozzle of the Livens uh, flame projector. Um, I don't know, but I've got lots and lots of uh, ideas for that. So that's what that underground room is. And you see, that's why I kind of want a little bit more height here. Uh, so I just might take that out. But anyway, that is kind of the direction that it's now going. The vehicle's gonna be great because he's gonna be dropping off like supplies. So supplies, you know, they get dropped off here. They just trot them right around here, drop them right down here. They go here if they're going into the lab. And then, you know, there'll be a staircase all out of wood. You know, I want it to look like it's, it's still, it's in the trenches. So it's gonna be all this kind of wood. I'm not gonna get all, you know, fancy in here and scroll work and you know nothing like that it's all going to be done like that but it doesn't mean that it can't be done uh you know nicely well and uh and and that's kind of what i i think i want to do with this big space so i'm really excited i think it's gonna be a lot of fun and um uh i hope you like the the direction it's going in and uh, i'd love to hear what you think worked on this yesterday um let me take my little scale guy out uh so this is really cool because this can come out so i can work on it you know do anything i need to do in it you know and have full access to everything and then when i've got all the stuff in this that's going to go in it i can just slip it right back in there
Hey, well, hello. I think I think we're at noon, and I think we can start. Uh, thanks very much for coming in. Um, I want to get rid of that and welcome and happy Friday, everybody. Um, can can everybody hear me? I I want to. Yeah, I think everything's on, and I'm seeing levels now. So, you know, I'm starting to figure this thing out a little bit at least. So, thanks very much for for taking a little bit of time today and 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 coming in and talking to me. Um. I've got a bunch of stuff that I did this week, and and I think it was a lot of fun, um, and and I hope you're going to enjoy it. Um, I've got a special guest on today, and I'm not sure if Neil's going to be on very long. Uh, it, it's late his time, but Neil Bullard sent me some pictures. We're going to just look at a couple of pictures, but man, his stuff is so cool. Um, he's doing. Hey, Neil is here. Hello, thanks very much, Neil. Um, so I've just got like three pictures of Neil's. That, that we want to look at. And then, you know, we're, we're going to see about having them on or, uh, later in, um, you know, like a few weeks or something like that next week, possibly. But I, I want to kind of start with him right after I talk about Oscar. So I had uh, a pretty good last week, but it, it was kind of culminating in Oscar. You know, it was a month on the, the Thursday before last week's uh, uh, live stream. It was a month since Oscar passed. But on that day and a month earlier than it was supposed to arrive, I got these. And these are 130, 135th scale cats. And they're really, really cool. So I'm going to show you some of that. Uh, Neil and hey, Paul, uh, or go for it. Penning says hi to Paul. So what I would like to do, oh, Martin is here. I didn't even see you, Martin. Hello, and cheers from Holland. Thanks very much for coming in, Martin. Um, so I want to show you these because they're really, really nice. If you have a pet, I, I and, and, and maybe you're doing displays for your models and stuff like that, it really meant a lot to be able to do this. And, and, and it really, you know, it, it, it added a lot, I think, to the diorama as well. So this is really fun. I'm gonna, and so we're going to look at that real quick. Um, I got to figure out where it is. Let's go to this. And um, so there's a, a picture of it. And I got to tell you, these things, these little, uh, these little castings were so well. We're going to talk about spring show, but this is uh, uh, the kit. And I have a link for these. Um, Mrs. Modelcraft found these on uh, online and they're from, they're from Mexico. This is kind of a double kit. There's two boxes. There's like set A and set B. I've got them all combined here, but boy, they're really nicely done. Here they are next to an existing figure that's, you know, set to go in the, the diorama. And they're a really nice size. Now, the one that I chose to do was in just a classic Oscar pose. And oh gosh, I got to get rid of that banner. I'm sorry. I get into this and, and forget half of what I'm doing. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's better. Okay, so um, uh, I think they're in a great they're they're in a great pose to represent a lot, and that's the thing. The two kits come with like two of each of the designs, and then the each anyway. There's there's two of each, and there's ten different cats. I guess is what it is. So you get twenty. In the two kits, I think they're fantastic. I immediately ordered uh, two more of the kit B or something like that because that little pose of Oscar that, that's so similar to what Oscar would do, kind of laying with his head upside down, you know, kind of you know laying in the shop like right there on the bench. Classic. So that's the one I chose, and I was it was so easy to paint. Um, it's pretty small, but I still, I think I got a lot of detail. Now I'm going to talk to you about how I painted it because I think I lost a little bit of detail when I, I clear coated it. I did like a clear coat after the fact. And, um, I think that lost some of the detail. So here's, and I, I hope, does that picture come out? Okay. It doesn't look all that great on the screen, but here it is. And you know, what I did was I started with the lightest color. Uh, the, like the tan, the amber color, and I did all of them in that. And then I started with the darker tones and and, and kind of uh, blended them in. And, you know, his white paws and stuff, I kind of did that last. 
And man, I really, really like it. Uh, to me, it, it does look a lot like Oscar. And there is where I put him. So he's in right in the middle and he's up on top of that wood, which he's always looking for, you know, a high place to be. Of uh, uh, And so I just love that spot and I love the pose. Um, it really helped me kind of, you know, get back into it. I was, I was pretty screwed up. Excuse my language pretty messed up. <laughs> um, you know, after losing Oscar 20 years, you know, he and I in the shop, but that makes me feel like he's here. It's, it's a classic pose. I can, and I, as I'm building it, it's right here. So I'm kind of looking where he was really, really great. So if you're interested, I have a link, I will put it in there. I got these off eBay. Um, and there was not a lot of cleanup. Um, there's a weird kind of seam going between them. Uh, like the two pieces, it looks like almost like two pieces were joined, but I, so I don't know, but it didn't affect it really. It's just kind of an odd thing. Um, and uh, I also think that um, uh, if you get like some of these, um, uh, where was I going? I, I think I lost my train of thought. Uh, uh, oh, if you get it and you find like the ones like I did, this little one where he's kind of curled up and, and, and stuff like that, um, they're not that expensive. I didn't try to go back and say, hey, could I buy just this one? Mm. What I plan to do is each diorama going forward that I do, if it's appropriate, like I couldn't do it in space. Eh, maybe I could, but I don't want to make a joke out of it. But I would like to add him to future ones. And so the different ones that are in there, I think this is what I was trying to say before, and I completely lost my train of thought, was I can use the ones that I love and then the other ones that I ordered to get more of that little curled up one where he's like balled up and, and laying the way he is. But then those other ones will work great with different ideas, different situations, and different dioramas that I want to build in the future. And so I think it's going to be just a blast to kind of come up with those. And then... You know, obviously, as I go a little bit further on, I think my painting will get a lot better, you know, in in how I, I kind of do it. But uh, I'm actually pretty happy with it. So now let's do talk about this painting, because I said the painting got a little bit messed up when I clear coated it. And I don't know if this is a color thing or maybe even a texture thing. I think it may be a color because I've heard a lot. I, number one, I painted in acrylic. And then when it was all done, and I think there was a really nice definition of his stripes on his back where they kind of come down on his side, that those kind of blended a little bit more and there were multiple colors in there. And I thought that looked really good. Well, when I did the TS-80, it's like, and I've heard people say this, but I hadn't really noticed it before because this was very, very tiny and minute little changes between the colors and stuff like that, it kind of melded them together and it made it look more just, I don't know, one color, mono color. It, 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 it didn't have as much definition. It's quite possible. It was kind of a trickle of the, of the light and stuff where it was, but it did look a lot more defined. So next time I do one and I have so many, I'm going to do another one. Um, I'll just watch that. And, and once I get it where it is, I probably won't do that and see if I can maintain that because I think it looked great and kind of like fur, you know, there was a little bit of texture to it. Yeah. So look fantastic. If you have cats, totally recommend the kit. Um, let me get a couple of comments. Thank you very much. Um, uh, I was just trying to catch up here. Um, Okay, so go for it. Painting said, hi, Paul. I'm very sorry, folks. I'm just like a little scattered today. Uh, Neil says, looks amazing. Great painting. Thanks very much, Neil. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I did that Friday after last week's live stream. You know, uh, typically we do a, um, you know, a group build and <clears throat> pardon me. I, I, I said to my, my Patreon folks, guys, can we kind of skip it this week? And, and it was because I really wanted to do that. It was the fifth. He he passed on the fourth a month earlier, and I just I kind of wanted to do that. 
Um, Dream Big Build Small. Hey, builders. Hello, and thank you very much for coming in, Dream Big Build Small. Um, I think it's your first time here, which is really, really fun. Thank you very much for coming in. Uh, Link Point says, hey, Bill, honored Oscar is a great idea. Thanks very much. Honoring Oscar is a great idea. Thank you very much because, you know, he was just a part of it. I've said this before. I believe he's in every diorama because of his hair. I battled hair for years, of course, you know, and, and I'll be like, you know, doing the, the really detailed stuff, you know, and my wet palettes there. And I'm like really deep into this face and I'm not really looking and I'll go and dip and I'll come back. And there's like an Oscar hair sticking right off the end of my brush, you know? So he's in every diorama. So it was a lot of fun to do it. Uh, thanks very much, Link. I appreciate it. Uh, John, I envision a diorama of herding cats in those extras. That's funny. You know, the the different poses are kind of fun too because it's that whole thing that I talk about. Before you have something or before you know a technique, you really can't plan for it. Now that I've seen all these little guys, I'm like, wait a minute. Now I can do this and, and now I could add this kind of a situation into a diorama. I mean... Cats on tanks. I think the first time I saw a cat on a tank is, um, I want to say it was Martin Drayton in, in one of his, and I'm sure other people have done it. Uh, it's not a very unique idea, but it's a very fun idea. And it's a very personal thing. Um, I had some folks commenting this, this last week online for some of the posts that said, yeah, I have had uh, my own pets, dogs and cats in every one of my dioramas. And I think that's a wonderful thing. I mean, it's a, it's a personal element of you. I mean, a diorama is a pretty personal thing, right? Why not go with that? So I'm, I'm ecstatic. It's really fun. It's really motivating. Um, it's really neat to get back into it and, and, and have him in there. Great idea, John. I agree. I like, remember that Hurting Cats commercial? It was hilarious. Um, that would be a lot of fun. Or an old lady feeding cats on her porch. There you go. Just like a herd, you know. Um, and I think with all of the poses, you know, one of these, I think it's 10. Excuse me, I'm drying out already. But I think one of these little kits, and they come in this little box, it's nice, is 10. <coughs> and like I said, there's two different ones. I got a kit A and a kit B, so I got 20. And then I ordered two more kits of the kit B. So that's what I've got coming. So you could do a little a little herd of cats with just a couple of those kits. 20 cats is a good herd. Um, Neil says, cat women and, and Michelle Fiverr uh, figure in leather. Hey, there you go. <coughs> Excuse me. Any kind of witch uh, or something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my gosh. Um, that would be a lot of fun. Uh, dream big... Uh, cat hair brush. There you go. You know, one of the things I have is every once in a while, Oscar would shed a uh, whisker. So I've got like a little vial in there because every I'd pick them up off the floor and just drop them in this little, this little jar I have in the office. Um, so I've just got a bunch of whiskers of Oscars. Um, it's a weird thing. I don't know. Um, Dream Big Beauty, uh, there's a great cats and dogs tank diorama on YouTube. That would be kind of cool. Now, has anybody done like the, 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 <coughs> excuse me, the, the dogs, uh, like gambling, playing poker, like a cats and dogs like that. Or I did see when I was building Emma Carlos and Ichiro, which is over there. Sorry. There's Emma Carlos and Ichiro. That I got to be working on that next week. Um, when I was building that, <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me. You could buy like an aftermarket head of a cat just to put in the top of your, um, machine Krieger, which was kind of cool. 120 is scale. So like big, you know, so I, I thought that was kind of neat. Okay. Let's see if I can get back over here. And, um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. Um, if you're into it, I think it's fun. I was pretty, I was pretty darn happy with the, the amount of detail I could get on it and the casting, the molding, how, you know, there, there, I mean, there's, there's pads on the paws. I think they look great. So, um, 
Yeah, I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, Scott says, uh, uh, I've got that picture of dogs playing poker. Lots of comments. On. I love that picture. Isn't that fun? I just I, personally, uh, I, I think that's a really, really fun one. And because uh, they got like cigars and stuff. It's just a great, great picture. Um, that's very cool. Thanks, Scott. How are you? Um, okay, so I'm going to get back to these slides. Um, and uh, I, I like them there too. You can see them pretty good. Uh, I think it's just a, a great place. Now, I've had lots of folks say, um, we're going to do this right next meal. I've had lots of folks say, what about rats? There were rats everywhere. And you know, when I was talking to Mrs. Mollocraft about this, I'm like, you know, I've got Oscar now and, and and I think I need to get some rats. And she goes, wait a minute. Oscar was an amazing mouser. Done. No rats. There will be no rats in this. I promise someday I'm going to have to do rats in a World War I trench because they were so pervasive. Even a cat could not keep up with it. They had terriers in um, some of the trenches to take care of the uh, of the rat problem. Um, it was such, it was overwhelming. So it has to be part of the diorama, um, but I, I'm just not ready to go there. There's a great set that I did find. Um, John, something, somebody will know it. I bet Martin knows it. Martin may have told me about it, uh, of a, a, a German um, company that produces a really nice set of rats in 35th scale. 35th and 32nd, I think, is what they're looking at. But yeah, I think that would be, uh, for my next World War One, not know when, when that is, but rats would be a great addition. But not this time, because Oscar's got it handled. Okay. Um, let's see what we got here. Um, uh, Homefront Forge. Hello. Thanks very much. Just ran across your channel. Love this. I miss making dimes with my monogram tanks. I even detailed a B-17 model to depict the plane in the Thousand Plane Raid. Wow, very cool. And you know what? A Thousand Plane Raid is playing on Netflix, I think. Either Netflix or Prime right now. And I saw it years ago because it's a, it's an old movie. Um, I, I need to watch that again. It's I mean, I was little, little, you know, when I watched it. Thanks very much for coming in. That's really, really cool. Thanks very much. Um, so... Uh, it, it seems like I'm, I'm stalling. I'm not stalling. I promise Neil. So Neil does one sixth scale dioramas and oh my, I've only got three pictures, but I mean, look at this now when, when Neil, you know, sent these to me, um, I was like, well, you know, um, is that, is that real? Cause I thought, cause he does a lot of like water. He'll add the water as he's, you know, putting mud and stuff like that. And I'm thinking maybe this isn't dried yet. No, that's epoxy, <clears throat> excuse me, epoxy, acrylic paint and, um, and, and varnish. Was it Neil? Um, wow. Great water effects and the mud. See, and that's the thing that on this diorama that I started, you know, eight, nine months ago, um, I had seen Neil's stuff previously and it was that mud. It was the addition of all of that, that I completely missed out on in my first diorama. I did not have a dirty uh, diorama. I didn't have a natural looking diorama and Neil nails it. And so that's what I'm going for on this one. I haven't muddied this thing yet. You know, I'm getting real close to getting done, but I still have to muddy this. And so that is, these examples, this these pictures that we're looking at at Neil's are exactly what I want to go for. It's just amazing. So thank you so much, Neil. Um, uh, I want to go to the next picture. Sorry. Uh, here is a longer look. And see, look at down that hallway. It looks like there have been things dripping into that water because there's little puddle waves coming out. Wow, Neil, just amazing, sir. It looks fantastic. Here's another example. This right here is something that I really want to be able to um, recreate. To be able to get the clumps of mud coming up through the, the water, uh, it's so muddy. Um, Neil said there's also rounds. You know, there's a, uh, spent rounds, shell casings, 
in there too. Oh my goodness. So this is what I'm I'm hoping to achieve. I don't know if I can achieve that on this one. Fact. I just I don't think I can. I'm going to have to go into the planning stages of it and 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 kind of absorb this uh this Neil when when we get a talk and and you talk about it because that mud is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And the snow and everything. I mean, you know, looking real. So thank you so much, Neil. And, and it's just a wonderful, wonderful uh, example. So um, I'm very, very uh, excited. I'm trying to get over here to read some comments. Uh, Neil said, yeah, for the for the mixture. Um, I'm a newer dial builder, mostly 124th. Your build is very inspiring. Isn't it, though? It really, really is. Um, and, and, and those elements that uh, Neil adds to it and the perspective and that dirtiness, it really feels like these guys are right in the middle of it, you know? And that's, you know, I think one of the things that I like to talk about in, in, in trying to create your own diorama is think about maybe um, uh, trying to emote. Yeah, I'm trying to word, use fancy words like, you know what I'm talking about? No, you're trying to create emotion. You're trying to give something somebody can take from it, you know? They had this feeling of, wow, or awe or inspiration or whatever, if you can, if you can do that, then I think you make a bigger impression instead of somebody just recognizing that, yeah, that's that kind of a tank or that's that kind of a vehicle, or, or I identified that airplane. If they can walk away going, wow, that was amazing. I think an emotional response to your diorama, to your model, to your display, whatever, is something that you want to go for. And Neil's just knocking it out of the park here. You know, I get an emotional response in looking at this image. Number one, knowing it's in miniature, what it took to do it, but also what these gentlemen are going through. You know, their pants are sticking to their legs because they're just sopping wet. You know, they're cold. There's snow on the ground. They're wet. They're miserable. Oh, my gosh. Really, really great. So uh, Neil says, you're welcome. Thank you, Neil. It's just fantastic. Scott says, great looking pictures of your amazing work, Neil. Thank you for sharing. That's awesome. Martin says, fantastic work, Neil. It has a gritty realism I seldom see. Awesome. I 100% agree. Uh, Neil says, thanks, Scott. And cheers, Martin. Uh, I think it's uh, of it as telling a story with models. Absolutely dream big, big, small. I'm sorry. Dream big, build small. Um you're absolutely correct. I, I think it is about telling a story. I, I've always, no, I'm not going to say always. As soon as I kind of got into it, and there were a couple of things in building my first dioramas that said I could tell a story, that, 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 that said, look, I can kind of make a little bit clearer image here because of this or that element. And I think in, in looking back at a, at a diorama previously, um, like the first one that I did, it, it was, it was called late patrol. And I just put a dimmer switch on the light. You know, I, I, I built it to this display and I built this little diorama and, and I wanted to just show it off. And, and if it's in a display, you gotta have lights cause it's just too dark. You can't really see it. Right. So that's all I was doing. I was just trying to light this diorama that I put in a wood and glass display. Pretty good size. Well, I just happened to get an, uh, <clears throat> pardon me, um, a dimmer switch on the LED strip lights that I got. And something happened. I, I put the lights in the top of the, the display. I turned it on and then I dimmed it. And this light goes off and says, wait a minute. If I can dim it, I can say it's a certain time of day. And that right there opened up the idea that I could do a story. I could, I could tell a story. I can set a mood. I can set, I can do something. It, it, it's not just, you know, it, the original idea was I wanted to build a tank. Built a, a tank, a Tiger One. And, and I thought it came out great. And so then I didn't want it to get messed up. And I'd always thought about doing a diorama. And I saw Andy's Hobby Headquarters uh, video about doing this, you know, a river crossing. It's just beautiful. It's still seminal for me. 
you know, just to, just to be able to figure out how to do this kind of stuff. So I saw that. And so I started building this thing and I just was thinking all along, no story. I was just thinking, I want to put my tank in a nice setting, kind of to set something. And through that process of building all of that and then turning that light on and then dimming that light, all of a sudden it was four o'clock in the morning. And these guys, the figures, were coming back from a patrol and they were crossing a dry riverbed. And, 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 and most of the patrol gets across the riverbed, but two guys. A BAR guy holding a, 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 a automatic rifle, you know, and a gunner. And they're they're like the last guys, and, and they don't make it across, and then they hear this rumble. And and it's four o'clock in the morning, right? And they're trying to get back to friendly lines. And these these, you know, they've been on patrol in, in hostile territory. So they're coming back. And this tank, they hear it in the distance. So everybody freezes, you know, just maybe it'll go by. Well, this tank rumbles right down the middle and splits this patrol. So you got most of the guys here close to home and two guys back here, the youngest guys in the group, most likely, you know, the 16 and 17 year olds that lied to get into World War II. And this tank stops. It just flipping stops right in, in between them and buttons down. And basically what the tank is doing is he's there in that dry riverbed and he's using that as his staging area before the attack. You know, and that's that happens a lot in military movements. You know, you'll, you'll move to an area. If it's a coordinated attack, you have to get everybody lined up and stuff like that. So you pick a, cho you know, you pick a, an area and, and, and so you'll go to that place. Then when they, the, and then everybody forms up in different areas. And once everything's a go, everybody attacks. Well, that's what this, 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 tanker in my mind is doing well he's buttoned up sure it's four o'clock in the morning but these two guys they got to get back to their you know they got to basically sneak around this tank that whole little episode of turning on that light and dimming it told me i could tell a story and i gotta tell you it just totally changed the way i looked at modeling it totally changed the way that i looked at dioramas and it really wanted me to dive deep, you know, really go into it and see what I could do. I don't think of building a model anymore. I don't. I think of a story and what elements that story is going to need. And that can key off of one model or one vehicle or an airplane or whatever. But figures became a, a huge part of that storytelling process. I think that you can do a lot to tell about something without figures, but if you want something happening, the figures really help. So anyway, I don't want to go too deep into this like I just did, but those things can spark and those things can take you on this path. And, and it's a really fun journey at that point when you get beyond what can be done and you understand this is now where I can go because I know what I'm capable of um, just because of that one idea, you know, and I, and I'm building stories now well beyond my imagination before. Okay. Case in point, that diorama that I'm talking about, it, it it's called late patrol. It's a fun diorama. It was my first full diorama. Um, that had one Tamiya figure pack. There's like five, six guys in it. It's cool. You would know it. It's like Rangers on patrol, World War II, Northern Europe. Easy. Um, this diorama, my latest one, just about done, 36 figures. So I, I counted them yesterday. I figured, man, how many's in here? I, I had an idea how many there were going to be, but I, I, I wasn't 100% sure. Yeah, there are 36 figures in this thing. And each one of them you know, has to interact with one, two, or, or more of the others. And they all have to fit into this little um, scenario, the story, the vignettes, whatever you want to call them. And I think that's really fun now. Uh, it gives me a lot to be able to go into and tell a story and then build around that story. So anyway, I'm just tangenting. I, I don't want to ignore anybody. I've got some great comments, but that was a wonderful comment. Thanks very much. Uh, 
dream big, build small. Uh, uh, Relic. Hello, Relic. Uh, hello from Arizona. Some artists place a symbol in their paintings. I like the idea of adding Oscar in each of your dioramas. It could be your signature as well as Oscar's imprint all over your work. Thank you, Relic. And, 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 and I agree with, with Oscar being here. I, I, I called in the boss because when I would be building, didn't matter what the heck I was building. Uh, he would just step right in the middle of it and say, Hey, it's time for, I need some attention period, you know? And when he gets like that, you just, you can't do anything about it. So it was wonderful building with him. And I really feel like he's part of it still. That was huge. That was a hundred percent absolutely made my day. Uh, and, and, and made me want to really, really go. My name is Corey, so you don't have to see my own channel every time. Thank you very much, Corey. And I'm going to try to remember that. I'm really bad about it. So uh, I hope you should like this and want to come back in the future. Um, so please remind me, because and, and I'll get it after a while. But I'm, I'm pretty bad at, at names. But thank you very much, Corey. And, and I appreciate you coming along. Uh, Homefront Forge, fantastic story. Well, thank you very much. It was, it was uh, a big deal for me. I had wanted to do dioramas for so long and had tried completely without any luck. And when I saw that, that movie from Andy or that video from Andy's hobby headquarters, and it's, it's like one of his top three or four, if not number two, uh, top videos, uh, that Andy's hobby headquarters done. So you, you'll, you'll see it very, uh, prominently if you, if you should go to his site, it's a great video. And he's just, boy, one of my my biggest inspirations, you know, starting off doing this. Um, of course, says, wow, the decision that would be going through their heads. Wouldn't it be? I mean, that's the fun thing. Um, I'm sorry. I think one of the uh, one of the things that that helped me understand. I'm uh, and I mentioned this a lot during the live streams is. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, movie arcs and movie stories, the making of movies and stuff is really what I think of when I'm trying to figure out what I would like in the diorama. I want to make it interesting enough and like a set, like a, like a, a movie set or something like that, make it realistic enough that, that literally if those little figures that are in there started moving around, it would totally work. So that's kind of what I think of when, um, I'm trying to come up with the ideas for this. So adding like they do in a story or a movie, adding some kind of anxiety or adding some kind of tension, you know, that's palpable. You know, people say that it's like, you can see it. It's just palpable. That's literally what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to create in some situations, situations that are easily recognizable, but there's a tension. In this current, and man, I wish I, I might have a picture, but um, in my current diorama, I have a conversation going on in this room where Captain Livens is talking to a French commander and they're not happy with each other. Um, it's an argument. They're not yelling, but you can see, you know, the French commander has his arms crossed like this and, and you know, uh, Captain Livens is above him leaning over a rail and I really try to capture that. And so that's what the movie kind of thing helped me do is to try to figure out, okay, to express an emotion, to express those two guys, you know, what are they thinking? They've got to get to their guy, those guys, you know, the, 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 the tank, it, I'm jumping around, I'm sorry, but the tank is not running now that, you know, that stopped between the split patrol, it's not running. So they didn't even have the cover of the noise it's you know it's 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 steel tracks stop to a squeaking halt and then ting 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 as stuff starts cooling down i mean it's that kind of an environment if you can try and get that into your diorama in some way i think that that people want to see a resolution to that conflict they they, they want to see how this or they want to think about how this could could resolve itself. I, I think that we want to resolve something like that. So if I can put an emotion in there that's recognizable, that's one of the ones that I go for. I'd also try for things that are comedic, things that are fun, 
things that break tension. I think that's important. Um, but, but normal things that people would be doing in those situations, um, you know, that's, that's just kind of how I see it. So thanks very much. That was really cool, Corey. Um, and then, uh, Scott, hundred percent relic. That's very, very cool. Okay. So let's look at some more pictures because I do got more pictures. Uh, now that's it for Neil though. So, uh, thank you so much. I've got a whole bunch of pictures from Neil, but, um, uh, we're going to have him on the show and, and, and certainly we want to talk more to Neil and, and, and about his stuff. This is the mirror, uh, shuttle project that I just finished up. And, um, I got this thing packed out last week or this week, sorry, earlier this week and, uh, back to the museum of flight. And, um, you know, I did a few things in here to kind of pack it up. I thought it was, uh, worth showing, you know, just making a stabilizer and, um, you know, stuff to hold it. And that thing, you know, traveled really well. And, um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And I'm glad it's out of here. It was a fun and I was honored to work on it. It was a, a volunteer effort. Um, but man, I was really glad for that thing to be done. Um, uh, Corey's asking real quick, let me get to that. Uh, Corey's asking, what do you use for water effects? Now, I asked the same thing. And, and Neil said he's using epoxy, acrylic paint for his color, and varnish. Yes, varnish. And um, what I'm hoping is that uh, Neil will show us that process or, or talk to about that process in the future on the, on the live stream. Uh, and it may be pre-recorded, but I think Neil's trying to do it so he can be on live. Uh, so that'd be great. So thanks very much. Okay. So now I, what am I going to talk about? Ah, electrical service. So the other thing that I also, I also noticed was, so I got all these lights in this diorama, right? Well, where's that electricity coming from? So I add electrical service to the diorama this week. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. So let's look at that. So here, this, uh, I have this little bin of little uh, white metal parts and see there's a little piece of landing gear there, but I thought it looked cool. It's on the right. I thought it looked cool. So I cut it in half, the wheel in half at least, and I mounted it to this little board right here. Boy, that's a terrible picture. But I was trying to make some kind of a junction box there. So I made this and it's supposed to be kind of a big master throw switch. And I, you know, I, okay. This probably is going to irritate some folks, and and I, I'm not apologizing for it, but I want you to understand why I do it. When I build stuff like this that's just obscure, I kind of do it out of my head. I, some I do go and look for references, but a lot of times I'm in it. By in it, I'm building and actively, and I got this idea, and I just want to dive into it, and I just build it, Okay. I'm building it out of my head. I'm like, that kind of looks like this. This kind of looks like that, right? That's what I do. And that's what I did here. Um, that's just my my thing. I, I like doing that. I, I feel like I'm I'm trying to satisfy what it should look like and what I want you to take from it than an actual thing. Because sometimes you see an actual thing, you're like, what the heck is that? I want it to be easily recognizable. I want it to look like you can go, that does that, you know? And I thought this did that. So even if you don't know exactly what it is, or you can't like, you know, mark and say that is that thing. And I've seen a picture of it. So I just wanted to get that out of there so that you understand. Um, and then I got some folks here. Let's say hi real quick. And we'll go back to that. We talked about that. Uh, Dominic is here. Hello, Dominique. Uh, Koku, uh, evening. And thank you very much for coming in. Uh, hey, Dom, big dream. Uh, and that's Corey says, hello. Hi, uh, dream big, big, small. Thanks very much. So thanks very much for coming in. It's really neat to see new folks coming on. I appreciate that. So I'm going to go back to these pictures and show you what we did for the electric service. And I'm going to remind folks that maybe don't know. So this is the vertical shaft in the diorama. We'll get a better picture of that. But that is where pretty much everything to the underground portion of the diorama comes down, down that vertical shaft. So here I needed some service coming in. 
this is the switch and I started there and then I started building the wires coming out of it. And, and so I, I built the wires. Um, uh, first I, I built some standoffs, uh, some little standoffs and they worked great in this situation. They didn't work in another situation we'll get to. And I also tried to have them, um, you know, routing off to different rooms. Now, the, the funny thing is, 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 is each side of this has, has an output. And so if, if you come back here on the far uh, left of this little box type thing um, over the throw switch on the left-hand side, that's supposed to be input. There's a bundle of wires coming in. That's your input. And then everything is, else is an output. Um, and that's one of the things that I, I try to talk about when I'm building things when, when people ask me, I get this, actually, I get this question quite often. How do you make it look like it's real? Well, it's not real, but I, I, I just think about input. And I've said this before. I think about input, output. I think about if it's a material kind of a uh, thing is trying to move material. I think about, okay, it moves it from here to here. What's it doing? Is it chopping? Well, it's going to have to have this kind of an action. You know what I mean? I just, okay, here's, here's a great way to think about it. In the 70s, the uh, the cartoons where it shows the factory, the food factory, I don't know, it's like Looney Tunes or something like that, where it shows like a farm and, you know, they're, they're taking all these vegetables and they put in this area and that goes along this conveyor belt that goes through all these little funny little machines and there's a chopper and there's a, and out the other side, it's like a packaged like meal, like a, like a TV dinner, which was very popular in the seventies in cartoons. That's what I think of when I build a machine or a scratch build, something like this, that's kind of what I'm thinking of. It's just generally looks like that. It's very, very cartoonish. Now, the fact that I worked in manufacturing and, and, and the, that steel industry and stuff like that for 30 years, that probably goes a lot into it because I've seen a lot of machinery and stuff like that. But when it gets down to it, that old cartoon from the 70s, very, very symbolic of what I'm doing with the kind of things that I build. Uh, some comments here. Um, Corey says, so cool. Level of detail is impressive. Thank you very much. Uh, Dominique says, I have watched your views before. I'm impressed with your work. A good source of inspiration. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. And... Here's, I think, I was thinking about it this week. One of the things that that makes um, the details for me uh, not easy to do, but I think easier is just time. You know, I'm spending a lot of time with this thing. I, I, it's been eight months. And, and so there's a lot of time me looking at it and saying, you know, it needs one of these or it needs one of those or it doesn't have this or that. You know what I mean? So that's, I think a lot of it has to do with um, kind of being patient and, 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 and just kind of sitting back because I do that a lot. I'll be building, get really deep into the building, and then I'll just sit back, drink my coffee, you know, have a Coke in the evenings, you know, and I'm just looking and I'm just trying to figure out, well, it doesn't have one of those or that should not be there. It should be over here, that kind of thing. And by not rushing through my dioramas, by not really building on a schedule. Look, I don't build these for somebody else. I, I just, these are all for myself and for the channel, frankly, you know. Um, yeah, so I'm not, I'm not trying to be under the constraint of, of a deadline. Though there is a show coming up the, you know, on the 27th of this month. And, and I do want it ready for that. But, you know, if it's not, it's not 100% like a, a deal breaker for me. I really want it right. And like just the other day, I started doing these. I haven't done any grenades yet. This is just grenades I glued to some sprue so I can paint them. Well, as I'm making those, I'm like, well, what am I going to do with these grenades? <gasps> well, we have to have trip wires and we have to have some grenades booby trapping the wire. Makes perfect sense. So I've got some super thin wire that comes from like a phone charger cord. They use really, really thin wires in those. So I took that phone charger cord apart, got some of that wire, and I'm making booby trap trip wires with grenades outside the, you know, the backside of the wire. 
Why wouldn't you? So it, it it's that kind of thing, you know. I, I think spending time with it and and then just ruminating on it, you know, just looking at it and saying, well, what what doesn't it have? Really helps get that in there. I think if you're building and saying, boy, I'm I got to get to this other model, or I haven't done 14 models this year. And, and, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I have friends that do exactly that. And they're wonderful builders and amazing stuff, brilliant and, and well faster than, than I am with, you know, much better skill, you know, fact. But I think because I don't prescribe to just these are all the models that I build, what I'm really trying to do is create something that's just really fun and, and, and has a very full-blown story to tell or an imagined whatever, that's really what I'm interested in, not just how many models can I build that, that, that doesn't even enter into my, my uh, thought process. I don't care. It, it, what I do care about is, is trying to make the funnest thing I can out of a diorama. So just a little bit different focus, I guess. Um, I have some... Uh, okay. Okay. I think we've got all of our comments. Let's go back because I want to talk about these standoffs because they were a real kind of a good and a bad thing. So these are the little standoffs I made that were to hold the um, the cable so that, no, okay. So the power cable that I'm using is, is actually lead wire that um, they use for... Um, uh, uh, tying flies, fly fishermen. And so they'll use this as a weight. Well, I'll paint it. And because it's so pliable and when you move it, it, it doesn't spring back. That's the number one thing. I'll put it on my shirt. Maybe it'll focus better. But when you move the lead, it doesn't spring back. So I'm thinking, well, this is great. You know, I'll just make these little standoffs and they're supposed to be like the old, um, in the turn of the last century, you had an insulator. <clears throat> excuse me, that would hold an individual wire. Well, these are bundles, but the point is they're supposed to look like insulators. So these insulators I, I had to make, they worked great when they were coming off of um, the main panel. And so then I made these, these are just groups of two that have to go through the trench and, you know, same kind of design. I, I did these little discs on there and then I took these little tiny pieces of uh, of sprue and glued them on there. So you see those little two tabs. So they're supposed to fit like a pocket. Uh, you know, the wire will fit in there. Well, okay, fine. The problem is routing this stuff, even though it's super pliable. I was breaking those little standoffs left and right. I was popping off here and there. So it was a real pain in the you know what. So I do not recommend this. I, I tried another, because uh, I've tried to make these little insulators. I think you would know what they look like. They're, they're, they're round. They're in, in real life, they're about this tall. They're round. They're ceramic. They're white in color. And they would have two wires going um, past the little ceramic hold down. And that's what would be inside your home before they had um, insulated wire, like bare wire wrapped with, with cloth and something else. It was just wacky. So that's what I'm trying to make. Well, like I said, these kind of look like that and, and would pass, but the fragility of it, it's just not worth it. The last time I did it, I mounted each of those same kind of design on the end of a pin. Uh, I, I have to think that's the way to do it. Probably is going to take a little bit longer to build, but they do work. And I've got one in here. I, I don't know if I want to try and dig it out, but it, it really does work a lot better. And so you can put the pin in there. It's much more stable. These worked. I mean, I was committed and I did it and we're going to see those pictures, but it would, man, I don't, I don't recommend this, this process. Uh, so let's take a look at those real quick. So that's, you can see where I did it. And, and so after I got these mounted uh, around the inside, um, I just needed to route this uh, pre-painted lead wire into those. Each one is individually glued into those uh, little standoffs throughout the, the trench. And this is the feed. This is the elect electrical feed that's bringing the, um, the electricity into the lower trench. 
or, or the lower tunnels under the trench. This is it passing through the trench itself. It's really hard to get these pictures. I, I tried, uh, and, and, and I'm hoping those are coming out. Obviously, it looks a lot better uh, when you're in front of it, but um, you can see that they, those standoffs are there. I did muddy these up. I did put some, some extra uh, stuff on them so they look like they've been weathered. Um, and, and I'm really happy with them. I think they came out great. So I would uh, say put them in, but definitely a better standoff than I used. Okay, so now this is a little bit mundane, but I, I also have a top-down shot I want to show you of this. But this is the back of the diorama. And so what this is, is uh, John knows exactly what this is, John Robeck. Um, I, I covered up that area, John. Behind the diorama, you see that rat's nest over there? I said there was no rats. Well, there is a rat's nest, and that's the electrical for this. It is safe. It is, it is all good. It's just going into a breadboard. But to cover that up, I had this cover, but I didn't have a top on it. So I put that little strip on there and that covers it up real nice. So why don't we go back now and I'm going to look at my top down and um, I've got to switch it back on and, and we can look at some uh, live shots of it. And, and I think it, it'll make a lot more sense. So here, <clears throat> pardon me, I'm going to zoom in as best I can and see if we can see these lines a little bit clearer because here I think, you know, you can see how these are routed. Now, the funny thing is this, this is the front of the diorama. So that is, you know, we're at a bleak, you know, looking down, but this is the front, but this is the enemy side back here. And so I really have to, think that I wouldn't want a lot of electrical running this way because we have to do, you know, ingress and egress, you know, go up into dead man's land, all that kind of stuff. So I can't have a lot of electrical over here. I do have pass through at the, at the uh, cave-in point, but along here is where we have our main electrical. When viewing from the side, you can't see it very much. So you have to really get in there. So is it worth putting it there? I've talked about this before. hundred percent. Absolute. Yeah. I, I, I really want to get that detail in there because I, I think about this as something that I want to uh, deeply examine when I'm building it. And, and maybe this is part of an answer for a question earlier, you know, about not, not a question, but a statement like your detail. It really is about, I think about people looking at this in the future, you know, what, hopefully many years in the future and trying to figure out how I did it, what I did, why I did that kind of a thing. And so that's why I kind of put that detail in there. I, I, I just, I like that idea. I've always been a, a, a fan of archaeology. Um, started with, you know, probably the early 80s when, um, you know, Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark came out. As a kid, I saw that. And that whole archaeological thing I thought was fascinating. I thought, how cool was that? And so that started this little thing with me growing up, um, just reading about archaeology and, and, and trying to understand history and digging stuff up and, and how, uh, and I never, I never seriously, and, and, and I don't have the, um, the background to do anything like that, but just the interest of it. And, you know, thinking what it's like to be a person like a curator in a museum, trying to understand, solving that puzzle, why someone built this, why was this made in such a way? As a craft person, I think that's, that's, that's highly interesting. Just the method, the technique. But as a historian, to look at something and try to rebuild in your mind how somebody built something, I think is just fascinating. I think that is a really fun endeavor. And then if, if you're able to figure out how they built it and then build it yourself. I've seen a number of shows on this where people will take like, uh, th there was a really cool thing in, in one of my woodworking magazines where someone took an Egyptian from King Tut's tomb, an Egyptian stool that's, that's currently in the, in the Cairo Museum. Well, they didn't take it, but they took the design from it, did studies, and then rebuilt it. In the methods that they built in King Tut's time. Well, 
and 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 they found out very very cool things about it and how they they put the stretchers on the stool you know to stabilize the legs and there's this kind of a snap fit uh kind of engineering and it's ingenious it's absolutely ingenious and as a woodworker i think that's fascinating well it's the same thing if you're like someone who's into books and uh you, you know you you, you want to see how it's bound or you want to you know talk about how they wrote in that day. I, I just think that is fascinating. I'm a big fan of history, but also a big fan of, of technology. I've talked about going and seeing uh, the Vesuvius, um, you know, the, the exhibit of Pompeii where the bodies are there and stuff. But that's kind of the last part. The first thing that they show you on that exhibit, and I saw it maybe 10 years ago when it came through Seattle, but they showed the technology. They showed some of the artifacts. They showed jewelry. They showed mundane things. The point was, I, I would be hard pressed, and, and I was in manufacturing, not like I'm a pro, like I know everything, certainly not, but being in manufacturing and understand how things are manufactured and to see some of the things that they made Holy cow. <laughs> the example that I use a lot is they had fish hooks. And if you held that fish hook in your hand and they had it on exhibit there, it looked no different than a fish hook of today. One difference. Instead of the end of the fish hook where it's looped, where we have it now looped, they had hammered it flat and punched a hole through it. That was it. The barb, the hook, the design. The actual physical design of that fish hook, virtually the same. So, you know, and it's just one example. I mean, there was jewelry, necklaces that, 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 that were just absolutely stunning. And working with metals and working, I, I do some metal work and, and, and some smithy and kind of that kind of work. The, the, the abilities, the technology that they had back then was sometimes better than what we have today. So I think it's a really neat thing. So where does that all go? I literally think about this being completely disassembled by someone in the far distant future. I know it's a fantasy. I'm just saying. But in the far distant future, they take it apart and try to figure out how I built this. They don't know me from nobody. But they're trying to figure it out. I think that is fascinating. And I'm not putting like Easter eggs in there and stuff like that. It's just that I just think that would be a fun discovery for someone like myself that's interested in that kind of thing to be able to find all these things in it. And it's like, why would this person go to that length? Or why did they do it like this? Or there's a much better way. Or we don't do it like that anymore. That That is a neat thing. I think that's a lot of fun. So anyway, that was a... You got to watch me on those tangents, man. I'll, I'll flip and go. So thank you very much for the questions. Um, I have some, I don't think I have any more slides. I think I was going to talk about the show that's coming up. So the show that's coming up is the IPMS Seattle Spring Show. And um, it's a really, really cool show. It's nice uh, um, judge show. It's a competition show. And um, I. it's the only one that I've ever... Uh, competed in. And last year I did very well with my Wolfenstein diorama that won um, first place uh, for dioramas. Uh, well, no, it got uh, first place for fantasy diorama because it was a, you know, fantasy story. Um, but then it got best diorama for the show, which was really, <laughs> geez, can you imagine? So I was like, wow, that's awesome. My very first time, you know, competing. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, so I'm really looking forward to going back to that. Um, I do want to enter this. Um, I'm trying to get it ready. I'm also trying to get um, Emma Carlson Ichiro ready. And now this, this is a fun one. Last week, Emma Carlson Ichiro is sitting on the outfeed table of the table saw. And, you know, I talked a lot about Oscar, him passing, you know, uh, about five weeks ago. Um, but we also have Ghost, 
Ghost is our other outside cat. He's two, just over two. And he wasn't he wasn't allowed in the shop when Oscar was here because it was Oscar's shop, is Oscar's shop still. But Ghost is allowed in the shop now. And Ghost is very precocious and he's a wonderful cat. And 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 he's learning. But this came off of Emma Carlos and Ichiro last week. And uh, <clears throat> I wasn't so happy. And, and we don't yell at our cats, obviously. But we had a conversation. We are really, really over-the-top cat people, me and Mrs. Modelcraft, way over-the-top. Like, we have conversations with... I talk to I talk to Oscar. I talk to Ghost. I talk to Cooper. He's our cat inside. So, yeah, we're, we're those kind of crazy cat people. But, yeah. So we had a conversation about this. It's not going to be hard to fix. Um, and and uh, Ghost is learning, uh, you know, what it means to be in the shop. Uh, he's not... He's not left in here on his own. He's but he's he's got to explore. He's got to see all the high stuff. And of course, uh, Oscar was in here for twenty. Well, he was in here for actually we built. He's been a he would shop, Oscar was a shop cat for twenty years, but part of that time was in the garage. We built this twelve years ago, and so Oscar's lived in here for the last twelve years, and so uh, he knows everything. Um, it's funny to see a young cat explore this shop. Oh my gosh. It's, it's not actually funny. It's, it's very scary, but he's having a good time. So thank you very much. I, uh, pardon me. Uh, John says, uh Oh, we'll talk about it tonight, John. It was really funny how it happened. I was working on the shuttle mirror packing that thing up to go to the museum. And, um, and I hear this crunch, crunch, crunch. What in the, so it was funny in ghost defense. Maybe you thought it was taking care of some alien spider for you. See, there you go. He was, he, he's very protective. I will, I will say that just like uh, Oscar was very protective. So it could have been that first last says I've had some conversation with the cats about their activities in my studio as well. I'm telling you. And you know, it's, it's, it's gotta be, you gotta be even tempered. Obviously uh, you have to let them know, no, this is not good. But the really fun part is um, Oscar's favorite uh, place to be was right here in the corner while I was building, you know, he just ball up and, and, and sleep right there while I'm building right here. Um, one of the first places that ghost went just, you know, got up on the bench. He went right there. He went right behind the diorama. So it's those little things, you know, that, that we kind of look at and, and, and we smile and, and, and makes our heart a little bit warm and, so that's nice. That's that's great. So because we absolutely love our cats. And um, so there you go. So, folks, thank you so much. Boy, um, listen to me ramble on uh, has has got to be trying. So I, I, I thank you for sticking in there. Um, if you would like to see more, I am doing long form videos of this now. Um, I'm doing about two weeks uh, a shot, like each each video kind of encompasses a couple of weeks. I'm trying to increase that to give you more content per video. And I'm really trying to look at the building aspects of, of what I did here. There are certain things that I just couldn't capture in shorts because I did shorts every day, you know, for the eight months that I built this actively. And so I'm trying to get to some of those techniques, maybe some of the tools you know, whatever that, that, that might kind of stand out. Um, you know, I kind of, <clears throat> I'm so sorry, excuse me. I kind of blew by these earlier and I shouldn't have because they're a really neat thing. I've got a slide of them. I don't know if I want to go back there now. Why not? What the heck? No, I'm not. These are uh, ferals. And what they are is for crimping around wire. And um, I use them in the creation, the scratch building of the little uh, power big switch. You know, you had the holes on the top and the holes on the bottom. Well, that's what I used is these. They're, they're very tiny ferrules. They're 1.8 millimeter outside OD or OD. Um, and the great thing about them is, is if you've ever tried to cut really, you know, small tubing, when you cut it, it either crimps the end or if you saw it it, 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 it just makes it really rough and it makes it really difficult to work with. These are pre-cut. And I think they're tumbled. They're, they're for like making necklaces and things like that. So they're like smoothed. 
the ends are open. They are round. They're not 100% always the same length. They're pretty darn close, but they're very tiny. And they work wonderful for like a port or like what I'm using it for where a, a electrical connection comes into something. And um, I just wanted to mention that. And, and I, I had the slide there and I just totally blew by it because I was talking about something else. So I'm very sorry about that. But if you're interested, I want you to take a look for these and their ferals. Uh, they are for making necklaces. I think you can get them at Michael's or online or whatever like that is a hobby store or craft store. And um, just, you know, a short, uh, very small tube that um, is very clean on the ends, which is very difficult to do when you're cutting it yourself. So uh, I thought I would pass that along. Uh, Link, <clears throat> pardon me, Link says, uh, if it was in the shop, I'd be checking everything out also. Well, that's the thing. You know, it's not like it's just a shelf. There's like a whole bunch of stuff up there. He got to get up there and check it out. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's kind of fun that he does it. Uh, uh, Martin, thanks for rambling again, Bill. Love it. Cheers from Holland. Thank you so much, Martin. Um, it's just kind of my thing, you know. Uh, so thank you, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful Friday. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Um, if you are a huge fan of mine, there are thanks that you can give. You can subscribe. Uh, I have a Patreon. And in the Patreon, we have a deal where, like John and I, I'm hoping you can make it tonight, John, where we do a group build every Friday. Um, and I didn't do it last weekend just because of Oscar, but, uh, we're going to do it tonight. So it's kind of cool. So take a, a look at my Patreon if you're, uh, if you're interested and, um, that'd be kind of fun. Scott says, uh, thank you, Bill. Nice meeting the first timers. Glad y'all made it. That's really, really cool. Great tip. Thanks very much, Corey. I appreciate it. And wonderful to see the new folks on. I really, really do, uh, appreciate you guys coming on. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And um, I, you know, this, this is replayed. So you can, if you missed any part of it, it'll, it'll come back on. And I, I kind of do like a, um, a preview. I just like show a video at the beginning. So you can just kind of fast forward it to the start, but thank you so much. Uh, yep. Should be there. Thank you so much, John. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, be great to talk. Uh, hi, Martin. I'm also from the Netherlands. Wonderful. That's very cool. So thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. And um, I hope you get a chance to get to the model bench this weekend. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.